Hello, welcome back to our teacup commentary. Um, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Now, um, today we're gonna watch Glory Hole Jerry's episode or partial episode, right? Keep in mind this is partial. The actual confrontation with Chris Hansen is not in this, I don't believe. But this is going to be a two-parter. So, I was going to watch Glory Hole Jerry's um, police interrogation because it is out there. And I wanted to watch an interrogation. And he has been on my mind a little bit. I don't know who this is necessarily. But I've seen his video pop up in my recommended a couple of times. So, I wanted to do it. But I just want to know who this guy actually was. Or at least help understand who it is. So, we're going to watch his partial episode again. This is probably just... Mainly the conversation with Chris Hansen and the investigators, whatever, before the confrontation. So just be mindful of that. Chris Hansen isn't going to confront anyone in this episode. This is going to be essentially a follow-up. But I'll explain explain as I go. Anyway, if you like TCAP, check out the channel. I have, you know, full commentaries on actual TCAP segments, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, let's get right into this and I'll just stop talking <laughs> for now. On this episode of Takedown with Chris Hansen. But it's clear to him that you're 14. 14. Yeah. He has a glory hole set up. He glory wants. Hole. Yeah. What? Oh my god. Tommy. Hey, what's up? So, what are you up to tonight? <laughs> First of all, okay, okay. A lot is popping up. So, I miss. Also, this guy is creeping hard. Oh, first thing I thought this was, this was Raw Knight. I'll stop mentioning him. This is something else. So, I've been watching Takedown with Chris Hansen uh, recently. That's because um, all of the episodes they've ever, ever made has you know have been taken down, which is funny <laughs> if you think about it. Not by YouTube or anything, but they've made them private uh, for members only. But you know that guy. It, this is supposed to be the decoy. He does not look like whatever age he's supposed to be, man. Very clear. Yeah. He has a glory hole set up. Yeah, maybe, but you can see the like the. <laughs> the stresses of adult life on his face. Glory hole. Vehicles off. Vehicles off. It's him. There's that guy. Tommy. Yeah. What's up? He's, what are you up to tonight? Hello. I'm sorry I'm pausing again, but the, the decoy's taller than me, bro. Why is he so gigantic? I mean, I, he, look, they just gotta find whoever they can find. I get it, but. No, Jerry. You need. Jer no, Jerry. You can't leave here. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so now from that context, or from what I'm seeing, Glory Hole Jerry did kind of run, but they tackled him. But. Anyway. Tommy! Hey, what's up? So, what are you up to tonight? How much? No, Jerry, you need. Don't. You, don't, you can't leave here. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm working with the Monroe County, Michigan Sheriff's Office Violent Internet Predator and Exploitation Response Team, otherwise known as Viper, in its latest so operations cringe. to combat child predators. Combat. During my time... Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm pausing too much, but to be honest, a lot is happening, so bear with me. I promise this will get better. But, first of all, Chris Henson, in the very beginning, being all smiley and all, you know, happy and it's shit... Real, it, it warms my heart, really. You know, I I like seeing Chris happy and stuff. I, I follow him on Instagram. Um, but by the way, not to plug in my Instagram, but you can follow me on there. I think I recently, recently, well, even what do you mean? I think it's me. I recently made a post over my birthday, and I did somewhat of a face reveal. We're well, more like a body reveal. To me. I cover my face, but you know what I mean. But anyway, go check that out. I'm so sorry. He looks great. You Violent know, he looks as internet. happy as ever. Predator and Exploitation Response Team, otherwise known as Viper, in its latest operations to combat child predators. Combat. During my time embedded with the team, we came across a man looking to hook up with a 14-year-old boy. Said he wants to come over, sit with me, rub my back, oh. be kind to me like my baby. His entrance was surprising. What? And he wasn't oh. too excited to find me instead of that young me. boy. Please, I cannot do this right now, dude. I need you to sit right over there. But he was all too familiar with me and my work. Now, You've seen my shows. I think that you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> 
funny. So just so you know, this is not the guy we are looking for. Um, this is uh golf cart Matt, I believe, and he also has his uh police interrogation out there. So I guess I'm getting you know two for one in this episode. You know what I mean? We're gonna see who these guys are. I guess. Viper I... team arrested Matt without incident Matt. and brought him to the sheriff's office for further questioning and booking. Booking. But this neighborhood seems to be an active area for child predators, wow. as the chatters have another guy itching to meet with an underage boy. He's already offered me money to come to him. Wow. Earlier golf cart. Wow. Offering money to go to him. That is... I don't think I've ever really heard of that in one of these things. Because, you know, everyone usually says they'll go over to the house. You know what I mean? I, I've never had them ever... I, I don't remember them ever essentially saying, hey, come over to my house instead. You know what I mean? Child predators. As the chatters have another chatters. guy itching to meet with an underage boy. He's already offered me money to come to him. Earlier, golf cart Matt came from his home just a few doors down from our sting house. Wow. Come to find out, the next predator also lives in the very same neighborhood. The Viper ooh, Chatter ooh, ooh. is talking to a guy named Jerry, who says he's a 19-year-old. No, he has not given me a location, but he said he's at his uncle's. Oh, he's visiting what? his uncle yeah. in this. What? 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 Okay, another context, by the way. This neighborhood looks really clean. You know, it might not be the fanciest of places, but it does look somewhat nice, I guess. Not like fancy, fancy nice, but I feel like I've seen some worse neighborhoods is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway... The thing about the predators almost living next door, you know, in the same neighborhood, I mean, is um, something that you probably don't think about in your day to day life. You know, what I mean, there is definitely someone in your neighborhood, at least that would do something like this, you know, not to make you paranoid or anything. But when you put it into that perspective that, you know, these guys have to exist somewhere and they might be honestly next door. You never know. It's crazy. Come to find out, the next predator also lives in the very same neighborhood. The Viper Chatter is talking Chatter. to a guy named Jerry, who says he's a 19-year-old. No, he has not given me a location, but he said he's at his uncle's. Oh, he's visiting his uncle. That guy's piercing blue, like light blue eyes. Oh, my God. <laughs> these type of people scare me with these, like, very bright eyes, but that's a separate thing. I was going to say... <laughs> Glorio Jerry is claiming to be 19 years old. Um, if you didn't see the preview somehow, he's, he's not 19. Come on. It's definitely a lie. And then he's also visiting, quote unquote, um, over at an uncle's house. Um, a lot of information that I would have known. I was originally going to watch this by myself, but I was, you know what? You know, it's not that long and it's a partial episode. Let's just watch it. And you know what I mean? And you guys can get an extra video this week or something. Oh, he's visiting his uncle yeah. in this. Yeah. Do we know how far away he is, or we just know he's in the neighborhood? Um, 500 foot. You ever have a, one of these <laughs> things where two different guys were in the same neighborhood, essentially? No. Wow. I mean, I've never seen it before in any no, of I've our never, I've not had this happen before either. We've had them very close by where they're in walking distance. We've had walkers several times, but not Jesus. this. I mean, we could see the last one down the street almost. And rather Wow. It's probably why he came in a golf cart, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he lives in the same neighborhood, you know. I mean, you wouldn't want to bring out your car, I guess. But when he was saying that, when Chris was saying, just to be specific, was saying that, you know, we had never really seen that close or something like that. I'll bring it back, but it reminds me that this kind of did happen. Because there was, um, I always forget his name. He's, like, so forgettable for me. Uh, but he knew Chris Hansen. Um, his name was, uh... Ah, what was his name? Um, I don't remember his name. Regardless, he was very close, and it was during the Hansen vs. Predators things. Uh, Charles, Charles Lawrence? Yes, Charles Lawrence is the guy's name, and that's who I'm talking about. <laughs> then him coming to us, he uh, wants the 14-year-old boy to come to him, and ooh. his reason is... Yeah, this guy's crying. Like This is a tragic you know what i mean i can't believe there are two predators in this neighborhood right um must be super scary i'm sure you also have to think about the people that are around here you know what i mean the neighbors finding out that they became you know rso's or that this investigation is going on here and then they find out that you know their ne next door neighbor is 
one of these guys. You know what I mean? It's it's it could be very surprising for some. One that or even most. I haven't heard before. I. He has a glory hole set up. A he glory wants. Hole. In case you don't know, what? a glory hole is a hole in a wall designed for anonymous sexual encounters. Knowing I'm 14 wants me to come there, walk in, use it, and leave without ever seeing him or knowing him. This is a bad guy. <laughs> yes. What do you think the odds are this is the first time he's done this? <coughs> I didn't picture myself laughing that much. I did. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know that, that this clip was in this one. But, man, the, the context makes it so much better. So, okay, um, we have Glory Hole Jerry, you know, hints. Um, Jerry wants to do Glory Hole work, you know what I mean? And no wonder he lies about his age because he wants to make this as anonymous as he can. You know what I mean? He, uh, homie right here, I don't, I don't know his name, just said that, he, you know, Jerry wants the decoy to walk in, you know, do the glory hole work and then leave. Yeah, you know I mean, um, which not to be graphic or anything, but I'm pretty sure you could tell the age based on, you know what I mean? The member in question. I don't don't want to get too into it, but like there's also that you have to get over. You know what I mean? Like I'm a young guy, right? I, I, I there's a difference. OK, there's easily a difference between someone who's a lot older and someone's a lot younger, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I don't know. What am I saying? That's so nasty. What the what the frick? Use it and leave without ever seeing him or knowing him. This is a bad guy. <laughs> yes. What do you think the odds are this is the first time Banger. he's done this? Slim to none. The Slim work to of the none. Viper team Who's chatters that? can be taxing, and it's a careful dance they have to do when talking to potential child predators. Nice nails. When it sounds like a vlog. Realistically, this is pretty cool. Um, this, this is kind of what I've always wanted from Chris. It's more of like a vlogish type of like, you know, aspect. But he he's kind of slow for the like the internet work and all that. I do get it, right? He's an older man. He probably doesn't understand too much about how social works or whatever. But back to what I was gonna say, um, the whole taxing thing on the um decoys easily. Come on, man. Imagine having to do all that talking and then you know having to talk about some of the most raunchiest things and this this and that talking to someone who's realistically a really bad person and trying not to mess up on any legal you know aspects of the chat um i could definitely see what he means by that this is not this is not starting by the, the way guy agrees to show up give me the sense of give me what you feel right in terms there. of preventing an actual crime targeting a child. You want to make sure it goes right. So we're trying to do everything by the books, but make sure that it's realistic enough where they're not scared off. Get him to the door and get him inside to walk in to so kind of move a lot to not catch facial features and move. And we know it's a heavy responsibility to stop these guys before it becomes an actual victim. Because if you're not here, you see that. if we're not here, a child could be here. Right. And who said? I like. I understand. We've seen guy with the red shirt a couple of times, but who's this? You know what I mean? Um. Anyway, he is talking about how he kind of decoys, I guess, in a way, and how he his strategy, realistically, um, of trying to get these guys here and moving a lot and not like having a stare down where they are able to look at you a lot probably helps. You know what I mean? Um, I still think he's a little too tall or he looks a little too, you know, old, not like in a bad way. You know what I mean? He looks a little too adult to be like, Hey, I'm a minor, but he, it works. If it works, it works. That's, that's how I guess what I say. That's what I say. If you want to know very little doubt as to what would happen if one of these guys walks in on a real guys. Time. I think it's a great area to be in because there is a lot of trafficking going on around here especially with the motels and stuff that we have around. So it's a very wow. scary thought to, you know, that this could possibly be a real child. It's a sense of creating some sort of justice, justice. in an area where guys got away with this and continue to get away with this for so long because the crime is so ubiquitous. Absolutely. You know, and a lot of us got in this line of work to help people. I mean, that's it's in your, it's not to, to be a police officer to help others, but um, this is just another aspect to, to help the young, the innocent that shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be out there, and um, that could potentially be a victim. Police work is mainly react. 
That is true. You know what I mean? I do appreciate Chris Hansen almost like um, making the police officers or like the people that are like texting these people and setting up the investigations um, and kind of telling their story. Not It's not like they have a lot to say, but it makes it more, you know, nice to hear that the people texting and the people behind the investigations are kind of have like their own motives and feel like they're doing good, um, which they are, of course. But, you know, I mean, we just heard that one lady say, hey, you know, what I mean, if if it's helping the young and helping the innocent, you know, what I mean, that's what I'm here for, which is really great to hear. You know, I mean, hear it. I know that is a thing. Right. But it's great to hear active, it. But this is proactive. This could potentially be a victim. Police work is mainly reactive, but this is proactive. This is taking the fight to the bad guy. There's been a new development with Glory mm. Hole Jerry, and it's one that I've seen all too many times before. If you want some bro, I will still come. Just understand. Um, I don't understand. If not, let me know. I'm 47. Wow. So he's gone from 19 to 47. <laughs> you see, look, this is what I mean. <clears throat> the, the comparisons to 19 and 47. Like, there. come on, man. Like, you're telling me that you would actually get away with something like that in age? Definitely not. But I do want to, before I get past it... <clears throat> Mention that one officer that we just saw before this. Well, he says that police work is more reactive than proactive. And I like to believe that is the case. You know, I mean, you call the police when there's something, you know, happening or something is about to happen. But in this case, the police is definitely going and, you know, almost preventing crimes before they happen and doing it themselves. You know, what I mean, it's not a reaction as, you know, he's um, saying it is. But the change in age is very, <laughs> you know, what I mean interesting to hear i've never seen every time i say i never or uh, you know i've never heard this i've never seen <laughs> remember that this is from me i don't really have the greatest memory but he switched from 19 to 47 that is a big jump in age if you want some pepper, bro i will still come just understand some pepper um, i don't understand if not <clears throat> let me know i'm 47 wow so he's gone from 19 to 47 yeah in the span of this conversation yeah, and he just said that that was a fam a friend of a family's face right. picture. So, so he showed you a picture that was obviously he's trying to lure people in right, now. Younger. Wow, so this is a little bit more right. I mean, this dangerous. is dangerous. Right, clearly, forty-seven, Ooh. pretending to be nineteen, sending people pictures, pictures of yeah. his right to lure even younger kids. Okay, why is this not working? Hold on, this should. Okay, I think someone told me. Clear. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks to the person who told me, like, press on the actual video to do that. Anyway, you know who you are. Anyway, to see and say that this guy is a full-blown predator, I think is um, probably the most truthful thing that has been said in this video. Um, the fact that he, you know, lied about who he was. He is trying to lure these kids to his house. It is just, you know, screaming of being a predator and... Um, you know, we've seen something somewhat similar when it comes to like the age faking and using other people's ages and, you know, doing all that. And it's, uh, Richard Burnham. I do have a video of him and I've been told to watch him again because that video is very weird, like weirdly made, but, um, Richard Burnham, he posed as a college student and the college student persona that he made referred, um, himself to the decoy. So the 19 year old college student whatever referred Richard Burnham to the 13 year old that's how it worked but behind the scenes it was all Richard doing it and in this case it's, it almost is the same ish you know what I mean even though he's not using a different account he first lured people in to be like hey I'm 19 and then reveal that he was actually 47 and then he wasn't who he was saying he was but um yeah just something to note people's pick clearly 47 pretending to be 19 sending people's pictures yeah, yeah his, right to lure even younger kids but it's clear to him wow. that you're 14 very clear yeah wow he's really about his glory hole i mean the fact that he's 47 and that takes this to a whole different level he says i'm looking to give oral and can truly deep throat you and swallow this <laughs> is grooming in real time yeah i was i was drinking <laughs> forgive me i was drinking in arizona by the way uh watermelon <laughs> Anyway, um, so the glory hole, Matt, I mean, Matt, with Jerry saying, you know, what he is able to do, right? He's able to do all these things. Uh, these things 
is reminiscent. <laughs> you know, we've heard from so many chats where people are like, you know, oh, I can blank. I can do this and I'll just, you know, put you up against the wall and blank your blanks. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, it never is not funny. You know what I mean? To me, right? Only when it's like serious and it's gross, like super gross. It doesn't, you know, it's not funny to me. But most of the time I find it funny that... I mean, these type of funny things are being said, but the context makes them bad, I know. But anyway, um, as well as as the whole... um, What else did he say? Really deep throat you and swallow. This is grooming in real time. Yes, that. Yes. Guys, now. Easily, the grooming aspect. So, um, that is kind of... I'm sure that is what's happening. We we would need to know more information, right, to, like, um, confirm it. But to be honest, I just label it that anyway because he is, I assume, like you know, um, he gro- everyone knows what grooming is. If you're watching this video, you know what that is. <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm sure he's trying to lure and like entice um, the 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 decoy to, you know, allow him to do certain things to him. You know what I mean? And um, most of the cases uh, in TCAP, it has been like that. You know, there's some sort of grooming happening. More, more some intense than others, of course, right? There's there are variables to these type of things. But there's then there's like the ones that are like fully, you know, fully groomers, and they definitely have some sort of aspect to them that they have, you know, experience or whatever it would be. But um, now ask in the chat, is this a Chris Hansen deal? Huh? Decoy says, who's that? So you'd think that would be enough to scare the guys away, but they still show up. Does anything surprise you anymore? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Makes you kind of... It's funny. Hold this on. This is I, I need to know what he said, because he was talking about Chris Henson. Booming in real time. Yes. Guys now ask in the chat, Chant. is this a Chris Hansen deal? Decoy says, mm. who's that? So you'd think that would be enough to scare the guys away, but they still show up. Does anything surprise you anymore? No. In these channels? Uh... I know I'm pausing a lot, but there isn't so much happening with the video. But anyway, I'm trying to be more insightful than anything. We're going to watch the, um, well, I'm going to watch the police investigation after this, but it'll be cut up in two parts if this video is long enough, but we'll see. Um, anyway, Chris Hansen mentions how, um, some of these guys, some of these predators actually question the decoys and ask if they are part of a Chris Hansen investigation. And honestly, how Chris puts it, right, when a decoy says, who's that? That is such a red flag when it comes to asking and wanting to know if this is Chris Hansen um, affiliated. But they actually still show up, which is the crazy part. Because, you know, I mean, knowledge is, is power, you know what I mean? And knowing that Chris Hansen is out there, and I'm sure he is working in the same area of the United States, right? You should be fearful of that, of this, of running into him realistically, but they are not somehow. In some way, they aren't. It's still surprising. You know what I mean? No. Makes you kind of squeamish a little bit, but I don't say surprise. I can see Gory that. Gory Hole Jerry is on his way. As the Viper team gets prepared, my team and I have to make sure all. <laughs> Cringe. I, like, yeah, I understand. They were like, um, the camera was probably like, um, det- uh, detective. Policeman, can we please get a, a taste of your taser abilities, right? <laughs> these shows As the Viper teaser. team gets prepared I'm sure that hurts I'm sure that hurts like a, you know what I mean <laughs> I'm sure it, it hurt like crazy but um, I don't think they've ever tased someone in the takedowns uh, at least I don't I haven't heard about it but you know maybe they tase this guy who knows to make sure all I mean, for cameras surprise. are in place to capture the confrontation and I'm talking exclusively takedown with Chris Hansen not TCAP I know there has been someone who has been tased at least and then the takedown Take and down. that the sting house looks like someone lives here the decoy is in position and ready to meet jerry at the door but also waiting for jerry is me vehicles off it's him, vehicles off. It's him. The sky man Funny. like also i don't know maybe it's just me but <laughs> these type of shoes like only adults wear you know what i mean maybe you should have worn something a little bit more yeah, I mean, more, I guess, young. Because, <laughs> like, these are, what, Nike? Like, gray Nikes. Truthfully, I have not seen a young person to wear something like this, and especially in gray color. Come on, man. You are insane. And if you know how old I am, I just turned 22 years old, and I'm dying, by the way. Oh, I'm turning to dust, but, you know, I'm still here. I'm in college, at least. But um, I, I did make a happy birthday post for me on my Instagram. Sorry to input that again. 
But anyway, maybe you can wear some Converse, some Vans. You know, what I mean, you kind of have the um, frame for wearing something like that. You know, what I mean, skater shoes or you know, um, the canvas shoes would have worked a lot better. But it's, they got the guy anyway. Why, why, why do I care, right? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? What in? Come on, he's taller than the guy. Right. Hey, Fourteen years old. Real quick. Oh, yeah. I forgot my charger. My. So Sorry. You, you swear nobody's gonna be coming in. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, he booked it. Uh, the decoy booked it. So Sorry. You, you swear nobody's gonna be coming in. No, my mom's at work still. She'll be home not till like seven in the morning. Right there. Sit right okay. there. So what are you up to tonight? How much? Yeah, that's that. Um, sad that we can see the actual confrontation, but this is how Chris Hansen wants to do his things. Uh, I mean, join his. I mean, do his true blue um, videos and stuff. So there's that. But <clears throat> anyway, I guess this is where we'll leave this. Uh, for now, <laughs> if this video ever comes out in full, we'll watch it. But as of now, um, I mean, there's nothing that we can do um, <laughs> about it. That's if they do change their formula. But anyway, we'll leave it here. Um, you know, I mean, hopefully the um, police interrogation video comes out the next day or maybe in two days. Who knows? But, you know, keep an eye out for that because that is what will show up after this video, at least. So, thank you for watching this for me. Watching this for me. Watching this with me. And we'll catch you some other time. Um, i.e. the police interrogation. But anyway, we'll leave it here and uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Okay, so random thing. <laughs> um, I had just ended this video and I was ready to watch the police interrogation, but... There is apparently a TCAP wiki of Jerry, and his full name is Jerry he Heather Heatherington. And um, we're going to read this out, and I guess I'll staple this in the back of the TCAP. Um, I mean, the Hands of Predator watch, because it doesn't make any sense for it to be in the police interrogation. So we're going to read this out real quickly. Anyway, Jerry Heather Heatherington, um, his quote is, No, not for the boy. Um, Jerry, when asked why he would build a glory hole, um, Jerry H Hetherington is a potential predator who was caught in the Monroe, Michigan sting of takedown with Chris Hansen. He is well known for claiming he was going to make a glory hole for himself and the decoy to use at his own house. And for complaining about his fake back pain throughout his interview. So here we have a somewhat clearer picture of, um, Jerry, um, so yeah, I this is the first time I'm seeing him somewhat clearly. Um, but anyway, Jerry Hetherington, his alias is Glory Hole Jerry. He has a son, a daughter, and a grandson. He is uh, apparently disabled, and that is his affiliation slash occupation. He uh, he is single. Um, he was born 1975. He is a male, and he has brown hair. Anyway, um, on to his biography. At the time of the sting, Jerry was an unemployed 47-year-old who had lived in Monroe, Michigan for the past five years. He initiated contact with a sheriff's decoy posing as a 14-year-old boy, claiming that he was 19 and staying with his uncle nearby. The close proximity with fellow suspect Matthew Matt De uh, Daly? Is that, is that Daly? Yeah. Greatly surprised the Viper, the violent internet pr predator and exploitation response team, who had never dealt with two men... Uh, with two men who were practically neighbors coming to the same sting house in such a short amount of time. Although specific details of his chat aren't entirely clear, it is known he initially wanted a boy to come to his house, where he would make a glory hole so they can engage in an anonymous sexual encounter, also sending pictures of other younger men's genitals he found online. Towards the end of the chat, Jerry told the decoy, if you, uh, quote, <clears throat> If you still want it head, bro, I will still come. End quote. Before admitting he was actually for, uh, 47, not 19, revealing it was a picture of a family friend he was using on the dating app, he made it clear he wanted oral sex from the decoy before leaving to find the sting house. After Matt was escorted to the police uh, investigation, I mean the police station, the decoy gave Jerry to go. Um, the decoy gave Jerry to go ahead to come to the sting house. What? Upon arriving. Jerry politely greeted the decoy, who immediately left the room with a phone charger excuse. With the phone phone charger excuse, Jerry, who was nervous, made the decoy swear that nobody else was in the home, which the decoy denied, claiming his mother was at work until the next morning. 
Chris Hansen then immediately entered the room and told Jerry to have a seat at, uh, at sorry, um, on a stool. <laughs> that's a, I think that's a misspell. Seat at on a stool at the kitchen island. Jerry at first obliged and claimed he was doing nothing more than meeting Travis, um, which I, I assume was the decoy's name. When Chris inquired um, as to how he met Travis, however, uh, Jerry became even more nervous and attempted to flee. Although Hanson wanted Jerry to, um, although Hanson warned <clears throat> Jesus Christ, although Hanson warned Jerry that he wasn't allowed to leave, Jerry didn't listen and was violently tackled to the ground and arrested by the Viper team. After taking a second to fix his glasses, Jerry calmed down and allowed the officer to handcuff him. Hansen tried to question Jerry while he was being searched, but Jerry began complaining about his back, caused by the scar from surgeries he had prior to the sting. The officer sat him up and he immediately pulled a pity party, breathing heavily and continued to complain about his back. Hansen took a seat in one of the armchairs and introduced, introduced himself. With Jerry confirming he already knew who Chris was, having seen his shows before, before, <laughs> having seen his shows before, Jerry then began belittling himself and calling him stupid, calling himself stupid over and over, having previously believed he would never try or and solicit a minor. Hansen ignored Jerry's moaning about his back and began to question him about the chat log. With Jerry continuing his stupid excuse, as he quivered and moaned over his back. Hansen re uh, reiterated there wasn't much sympathy for Jerry, who said he understood he understood while also explaining he had back surgery twice, calling himself disabled. As this is a lot of text, oh my god. Um, as Hansen pressed Jerry further, the latter denied um, the, the the latter denied having a, attempted to solicit a minor before, with Hansen refuting him by printing out how experienced he seemed in the chat. Um, wait, with printing? Refuting him by pointing out how experienced he seemed in the chat, such as pretending to be 19, although Jerry denied this, continuing to call himself stupid and claiming he found the picture of a 19-year-old teenager online, Hansen brought up the glory hole, with Jerry attempted to dismiss his actions by claiming he wasn't going to do anything, claiming he only wanted to see if the boy was real or not. Hansen pointed out Jerry... Um, pointed out Jerry asked if anyone was home, with Jerry changing his story up slightly to being dumb instead of stupid. Hansen acknowledged that preying on a child with a step above <laughs> was a step above dumb, but Jerry uh, continued to deny intending to have sex with the boy, while also admitting that his chat log didn't look good on him. When one of the cameramen came and knelt down beside Hansen to get Jerry uh, get a better shot of Jerry, the latter began um, pouting like a child. Rolling onto the floor face first to avoid being on camera, Hansen, quote, I mean, in parentheses, most likely sarcastically, tried to make small talk by asking Jerry about his tattoo, but he refused to answer, telling Chris he wasn't going to talk to him. He once again reiterated that this was his first time trying something like this, not caring if Hansen believed him or not, but also admitting he knew how it looked. He claimed he was looking for older, um, but admitted he was an idiot after... <laughs> admitted he was an idiot for finding and chatting to a 14 year old when asked if he had a glory hole Jerry denied this and flipped out upon being asked if he would have made one for the boy claiming it wasn't what he meant Jerry accused Hansen of messing with his head and again refused to answer any more questions um, when asked if he had seen uh, Hansen's investigations before he said he had admitting he found the people on the show to be stupid just like him <laughs> He then claimed he had never wanted to do uh, this before. Wait, he then claimed he had never wanted to do this before, and that it was a dumbass decision. He again brushed off his grooming as stupidity, with Hansen calling it a cop out. Jerry then admitted he knew he had broken the law before, telling Chris Hansen, um, telling Hansen one last time he didn't want to talk and was tired of listening to him. <clears throat> He asked to be taken to jail so he would call his lawyer and sort things out, warning any other predators watching not to do it, otherwise they would be stupid, <laughs> just like him. Anyway, on to the aftermath. So, on his way to police uh, station, Jerry apparently told investigators he was glad they were conducting the sting because there were other men like him who behaved in a predatory manner online and in the neighborhood. After being looked over by an EMT, no serious injuries were, dis injuries were discovered to have taken place. 
In the interrogation room, Jerry could see to call himself stupid for falling into the trap of trying to meet an underage boy through, the da- through a dating app. Acknowledging that he didn't understand why he did what he did as a father and grandfather, but he still denied actually wanting to do anything with a child. Um, he further denied ever having done anything like this before, usually reporting minors, including the decoy, as opposed to meeting up with them. He claimed that the only reason he sent those pictures of other men naked is because he himself didn't really want to do anything with men or minors, but for for reasons he couldn't explain. Whew, man, this is taking a lot of wind out of me, um, physically and literally, uh, well, um, figuratively. <clears throat> He persisted in chatting with the decoy. He then he then further admitted to the detective that there were other men in the park who were potentially predators, specifically describing Matt Daly um, as a particular as a particular particularly shady character. According to Jerry, Matt would tell some people he was in his 40s and others that he was also <clears throat> sorry, I'm like this is a lot of reading. Um, Matt would uh, Matt would tell some people he was in his 40s and others that he was only 30. He had apparently hit Jerry up on Grinder before, with the same 30-year-old age lie. Although Jerry denied ever meeting Matt due to the fact that he creeped him out. In regards to the glory hole, Jerry claimed he was going to make it uh, using a tool his uncle gave to him. He went on to say he always saw Matt walking about the neighborhood. Um, while kids were out playing, having a bad feeling about him. After the interrogation concluded, Detective wished Jerry luck before he was calmly escorted to jail. Jerry was charged with three felonies, child abusive commercial activity, using a computer to commit a crime, and accosting a child for immoral purposes. Perhaps his second worst nightmare, um, parentheses, after being caught in a Chris Hansen sting. Jerry wound up in the same cell as Matt, with Hansen and the Viper team leader hilariously acknowledging the potential awkwardness of such a pairing, uh, which, truthfully, um, it is something else <laughs> when it comes to, you know, their pairings. But um, I guess we'll leave this here. I don't, like, it's, this is, truthfully, this has kind of turned more into a, um, um, what is it called, a deep dive than just a simple, you know, watching of uh golf car matt but um we'll see what i tell title this because honestly i think at this point it's almost like an hour plus you know maybe i'll find some discussions about him online and then also throw it together but um as of now this is i'll leave this here and i don't know if i'll watch the police investigation after this um well like it like right now because i have it right here by the way um but i oh, shout out to joey's t by the way but um we'll leave this here yeah, I mean, honestly, I could have slapped in this and then just made it a really big video. But I, I like setting up the interrogations as they are, not like all mashed together. Because you know, I mean, some people really like the interrogation. Some people really like the um, the um, you know, the commentary, you know, stings. So we'll leave it here. If you liked, <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. If you liked what you just saw. Please like the video. Oh my god! Like I sound so winded, and I'm I'm like kind of you know I mean dizzy at this point. You know what I mean? And anyway, like the video, please subscribe. You know what I mean? If you enjoyed so far, we're at the end. Please, um, I'm like this all the time. So you know, if you like this, you'll like the other ones. Trust me. Um, anyway, we'll leave it here, and then we'll pick up some other time. Oh my god! Goodbye, and enjoy your day. Be safe.